Now in this video we will be uh, looking at macroeconomic policy. It's a quick, well, brief, very brief and quick video on the concepts and terminology and some statistics on the topic. The main topic is the fiscal policy and we move on to the uh, macroeconomic policy, oh sorry, mm, monetary policy. The basically there are twin policies, fiscal and monetary policy in the toolbox of uh, governments. Okay, so uh, Briefly, fiscal policy basically seeks to control aggregate demand by altering the balance between government spending and taxation. Well, what does this mean? It's quite a few fancy words in here. Um, just uh, think of a firm when it faces a problem of liquidity, well, when it faces a cash shortage, deficit in other words, what's, what's, the, what's the action? Firms usually borrow from outside sources so if the inside sources aren't enough obviously they are facing liquidity problems then they usually borrow from outside sources such as banks financial markets that's what the governments do as well when they need cash for spending they borrow from outside sources however unlike the firms unlike the firms government has something called tax tax receipts or tax revenues so governments can raise or increase their uh, cash holdings by raising the tax rate or by reducing the tax rate they also stimulate the economy so the the main point of fiscal po policy is to to get this balance between government spending and taxation if the government spends more than what it earns then it faces something called deficit if it taxes more than it spends then it receives uh, faces something called surplus obviously surplus is more favorable term when it comes to managing the economy but we also don't want to be relying on a surplus. You know, the, the, the extra cash that has been received, funds that, that has been received in the form of revenues, tax revenues, should really be spent elsewhere, or they will have high opportunity costs. Okay, we'll have a look at this in the, in the next few slides. Okay, the purpose of fiscal policy is to basically correct uh, uh, disequilibrium in the economy. When is disequilibrium? Uh, observed that's when you either face recessionary gaps or inflationary business cycle gaps or output gaps i should say remember output gap is the difference between actual output and then potential output and in these cases both recessionary and inflation cases there could be a gap uh, they could you know, there, there could arise a gap either positive or negative in the recessionary uh, periods usually the, in the gap is negative that's we produce less than what we could produce while in inflationary periods we have a positive gap and when we produce more than what we could produce or we we actually push the boundaries basically and both both of them are not really good for the economy not 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 favorable so 2008 9 crisis until then until 2008 if i remember and if you remember as well we had a very much uh, uh, very much a positive outlook in other words sentiment was positive businesses were borrowing uh, households were borrowing well everyone borrowed because everyone expected the prices to go up everyone expected the business to continue high rising and everyone expected to keep the work the jobs they had in, during the 2000s and 1990s now it turns out in 2008 there was sort of a break break on on this growth and what happened is that prices stopped growing as fast as, as much as it used to as they used to sentiment changed quickly and everyone started expecting this sort of fall in prices now when i say prices it's the price overall price of the whole economy in other words the price of everything from uh, goods and services to for example the house prices for example yeah there will be a, there were a lot of houses in the market in 2008 when you have a lot of houses usually the demand i mean there's a lot of supply means uh, related to uh, demand the prices usually plummet because see, everyone is offering at a, at, a, at a lower price as they want to get rid of the position I mean I mean they to, to sell their houses and to generate the cash necessary cash either because they aren't working anymore or they were uh, just basically they needed they expected the price to continue declining yeah so as a result we had then from inflationary gap we had moved towards recessionary gaps now this problem could have been solved using fiscal policy tools and in fact 
the David Cameron's government did try to solve the issue or the counteract the economic cycles, business cycles, basically, uh, by uh, sort of using some fiscal policy tools that we can discuss later. Now, another purpose is to fine tune or smoothing out or smooth out the business cycle, uh, stimulating aggregate demand. So, aggregate demand. So, what's the role of it basically? If you remember, aggregate demand was the sum of consumption, investment, and government plus experts. Now, G is basically quite related to the fiscal policy uh, actions or uh, uh, fiscal policy tools. Now, G is basically the government spending. And if government spending increases, that stimulates sort of aggregate demand, but then this eventually that aggregate demand uh, sort of uh, stimulant basically is due to uh, supply side economics in other words if government say, let's say spends on high-speed rail this is a big example because it's an obvious example of uh, sort of trying to smooth out business cycles or well, it's actually a long-term long-term project it's the, not necessarily a short run sort of uh, stimulus but then it's both short run and long run projects. It's, it takes five to seven years, I guess, to, to finalize or finish this project. Anyway, we, we are in the final stages. What happens is that with this project, government injects cash into the economy that leads directly to the creation of jobs because construction firms start hiring, architectures start hiring, services start hiring, all the economy. So all these suppliers of raw materials and services to this project basically start employing more people that implies lower unemployment as a result with you know they will be smoothing out of sort of or, or the, the the gap declines if the gap eventually and uh, originally were uh, recessionary now it could you know reduce or decline but eventually could be inflationary as well if if the economy if the government doesn't counteract the sort of uh, pressures Anyway, so this is one, one way of fine-tuning basically through aggregate demand. Sorry, uh, supply, aggregate supply. Uh, another thing is to 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 uh, increase supply. Aggregate supply is to uh, uh, give tax incentives. For example, you could, uh, as a government, for example, uh, reduce taxes or even remove taxes from. Uh, from uh, sort of say uh, small businesses for example yeah reduce taxes on small business profits or revenues that implies a lot of people will tend to open tax now rather than working and paying pay taxes now people might decide to open a small business and without paying tax they could actually generate high profits so that's one way or that's basically the process of in small business investment increasing small business investment or or government may say, okay, we'll pay, we'll let Chinese investors to come and invest in a country in the UK because you know we will offer them ten, five year or ten year tax breaks. That implies basically that induces investment in the, in in this country. So with a higher investment, new new buildings, no new factories, new houses, new new uh, new warehouses and new machineries, uh, supply increases or shifts to the right because now the potential of the uh, of the economy increases or the uh, capacity increases and the, the new capacity a greater amount of goods can be produced and service provided so that's the way the supplies can be uh, influenced okay that's the fiscal policy in brief sort of description and let's move on to describe some of the terminology now uh, the the things that we're going to look at today basically is associated with or associated with central government and general government. Mostly general government that includes central and local government. Central government basically is, uh, is the legislative body where uh, uh, it's more about uh, Theresa May's government, for example, in the UK. It's the main, uh, what do you call this, uh, the secretaries of state. They're all part of the government or members of the basically current government and and then general government is basically central and local government that local government now is the uh, county level and district level councils councils basically all central and local governments will face something called deficits and surpluses because this uh, both of the central and local government basically deals with budgets 
then obviously we, we will in the end uh, deal with uh, or we, we will usually uh, address the issues of deficits and surpluses as the government agencies for example government might have a deficit what does it mean it means uh, either central or local it could be both so generally we look at general government now from now onwards the government deficit implies the spending the, the, the spending ex or government expenditure is higher than tax revenues so the government then faces something called deficit government deficit or budget deficit in, in, in form more formal language now in contrast government surplus is or budget surplus is when uh, is when tax revenues are higher than the expenditures for example government might, might face deficit because of uh, let's say this year it initiated a new new build school building for example and it overspent you know it spent more than what it received in the form of taxes it could be council tax it could be corporation tax so in local uh, local government for example usually receive council taxes or administrative council taxes and are responsible for it for example each uh, borough in london is a local government body for example they have the powers on how much to tax on you know on council house or how much by how much to increase or reduce the council taxes or or other taxes and also all the uh, parking fees that you pay the for your cars or parking spaces bills bills for all this administration of these old spaces in local local areas is localities is basically uh, administered by this local government bodies and then they receive the revenue from all from all these activities in these areas so in case they face deficit that's like period it's, it's when when they actually spend more than what they received in return for example yeah local government might decide to build a playground for example and it's may overspend and they they will receive or they will face a deficit or surpluses for example my some local borough or some boroughs in london for example westminster has in many cases has uh, has a surplus because of its so for example uh, council tax or you know parking bills for example uh, parking bills are a very minor part of government revenue for example but generally this westminster is known to have uh, surpluses if i am not mistaken I, I tend to read it on newspaper you could actually google which boroughs have surpluses uh, but you can also look at the different parts of england as well not limit yourself to london to see surplus and deficits these are public information available usually now on an, on a sort of higher level central government level the deficits when they sum up they will basically become a deficit for the whole economy you know if every borough or every council or every uh, area in in the in the uk face little deficit when you sum them it make up uh, they make up very big deficits and that implies billions of mean, mean this means billions of billions of pounds of uh, shortfalls basically this requires financing and usually central government is responsible for raising uh, financing instead of local so local government usually receives cash from central government and central government receives cash from outside sources let's say by issuing t-bills to foreign countries like china i think china and saudi arabia are, and also russia are the biggest uh buyers of t-bills treasury bills in the uk okay so that's one way of financing deficit as a result of issuing this deficit or oh sorry borrowings the governments usually have debt general government debt now let's look at this uh, statistics to just to uh, back up or give us an example of what we have just discussed so this table has government uh, general government deficit surplus and debts as a percentage of gdp for selected countries in europe and the usa these are oecd countries by the way these are mm, generally uh, developed economies now in the first two columns you have uh, government deficits or surpluses uh, all measured relative to GDP for example in the first column you have uh, average for nine for the period between 1995 and 2007 um, in green you have uh, values for positive or surplus for example the island has surplus in the on average during this period while all other countries except for switzerland for sweden here for example had deficits now def this implies basically on average these countries spent more uh, 
money on the projects or economy level sort of spending was higher than uh, than their tax revenues or all they received yeah apart from Ireland so Ireland in this period had a positive basically uh, budget deficit or it, this is also called just surplus um, while uh, in that's in this period and coming to the 2008 and 2016 period look at this now every single country had a deficit this is just after 2008 this shock 2008 financial crisis had a very big impact especially on Ireland because Ireland had sort of uh, uh, if I remember it correctly Ireland had a huge debt at the same time and at the same time it couldn't uh, it, it had this sort of uh, banking industry that that had to be propped up or bailed out huge I think Bank of Ireland was the largest of them that had to be bailed out that bailout money basically the amount of money to save this bank was borrowed from outside sources so that's 10% of GDP huge amount will be I don't know the GDP of Ireland for this period on average but if you look at it and times it by 10% that was the average deficit every year basically that they had every year they had to borrow that extra money basically while Germany fared very well in that period German economy was resilient by the way its expert based economy did very well Sweden well this is one of the best places to live basically if you might have been reading it as Sweden Nordic countries usually are quite resilient UK however you know again after the during after the crisis they had deficit this is uh, if after even after the government uh, David Cameron's austerity measures this is deficit is occurring so there's a lot of structural change in UK economy especially after Brexit it will get even probably worse the US economy had a lot of deficit again the deficit with respect to GDP has widened here well, they had to bail out as well by to government by borrowing from outside sources China namely and Saudi Arabia I think they had to pump money into the economy to save the economy well, to, to reduce the recessionary gap well that's EU is understandable EU has been facing a lot of problem anyway now we I've just told you about borrowings that these you know these deficits could be financed but how much was the average borrowing at the time now well uh, with by looking at this we don't know how much the average borrowing is but we can look at accumulated debt for example yeah between the period in between the period 1995 and 2005 Belgium had 108.3% of its GDP so the debt level of uh, uh, for example if Belgium had 2 trillion uh, 2 trillion uh, so let's say euro GDP a, a year on average for example it produced 2 trillion euros worth of goods then average debt during that year was about during this period was about 2 trillion plus 8 percent of that amount basically so that's the I mean they borrowed that much I mean their debt level was that much of during this period basically each year the balance of debt was this much while France actually well by the way after the after the after the uh, financial crisis the debt level actually declined you see even if they had a higher deficit on average per on the, on a year on a year basis their debt level declined this is because relative to debt their gdp must likely have increased yeah because this deficit has to be financed that means through borrowings or they may have raised the taxes by the way eventually that allowed them to reduce the debt by what four six percentage point here while France it, its debt level increased well look at every other country here every country here other than Belgium had their debt increased apart from Sweden Sweden managed to cut it down to this much either their GDP increased relative to it or they raised their taxation taxes to pay back but other than these two countries so this financial crisis was was kind of a burden built brought in extra burden for economies because the deficits are increasing countries had to borrow that means extra debt and that when you look at the size of the debt relative to GDP Japan's is alarming basically if let's say in Japan an average person earns 10,000 pound they would have a credit card of you know 230 percent more than what they have uh, they can earn in a year yeah so that's exactly this situation here.
basically GDP is a national income and if you think of uh, Japan as a person, Japanese person, if they earn, if that person earns let's say 10,000 a year, that's their total income, basically this much will there be credit card debt. That's exactly the same for governments. It's like for individuals, uh, debt is their credit card bill or credit card balance or mortgage balance. For economies, that's their debt balance here. It's basically 230% more. That's three times more, basically, than income, yeah? So someone earning a year 10,000 would have a debt balance in Japan is about uh, 30,000 pounds, basically. That's a huge amount of debt. Okay, so let's move on now. And note that this is only of because of average deficit, seven being seven percent, or during this nine-year period, they had to basically borrow and pump that money into the economy to cover it every year. This deficit. Okay, so move on. <coughs> now let's look at the debt levels. Note this. This is the U.S. A. Hey, they have to relate to the GDP here, per, per percent of GDP from 1990. So U.S. economy look looked very well in the 1990s even the Clinton years look ma Clinton managed to reduce the debt so basically he either didn't borrow much or paid them off using tax revenues and uh, if I don't if I remember the, the US economy didn't have any 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 significant sort of uh, 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 the recession during Clinton years but come they said George Bush years come George Bush with this Iraq war all these things are now rising. So the spending increase because the Iraq war had to be financed, not necessarily Iraq war, obviously. Clinton was able to pay off all this increase in debt, perhaps didn't spend on infrastructure, yeah? But then maybe, uh, you know, compounded by Iraq war, the infrastructure spending, for example, could also be increasing here. In any case, this huge rise is actually going back to the level of original level is actually not a good news because you know US government was GDP was rising and relative to G, uh, the the uh, the GDP the debt was rising as well so this must be a huge debt as a result and now this is uh, Obama period you know this also this Obama was kind of a uh, well uh, unfortunate guy, in other words, in had this situation. He he came to power in at the bottom of recession. So one way to take the U.S. government out of recession, unlike eurozone, basically, he decided to borrow, and and carry on borrowing. It looks like you see, as the GDP grew, uh, the the debt grew as well. Now they borrow their GDP is around twenty twenty trillion during this time. It was right here. It was twenty trillion, and they. They have that much debt now, accumulated debt now, 20 trillion. So that, you know, for G there's, there's no doubt that the U.S. economy, U.S. will pay off its debt. It's it's a huge economy making up of made up of 50 countries, literally. Yeah? 50 states is basically as you know one state is li as large as the U.K. So you can you can expect the, this economy is being strong with the dollar being the reserve currency among uh, around country around the world it's 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 not going to be uh, defaulting anyway so this is the obama's period basically I'm not sure why he borrowed so much i may have to read up a bit about the us economy but then you can see the same pattern in all you know uh, cases here that simply tells us something one thing and that was all about this financial crisis yeah all major economies, UK here and Eurozone, for example, is growing. Eurozone's problems are, are, are arising because of Greek and Italian debt crisis. So that's probably this adding to this sort of trend. But the Eurozone notes that in recent years has managed to reduce it because of the pressure from Merkel, Angela Merkel, pressure on reducing and austerity measures in Italy and, and Greece. And maybe you see a lot of Italians and Greek people working in the UK. This is because of the austerity measures. Austerity measures are, is, are the are sort of tool or measures to reduce government spending or reducing the government jobs. Because the more the government employs higher spending, it has to incur, basically. As a result, you know, with these austerity measures, a lot of people lost their jobs in Greece and Italy. And you could see them here working as well as university lecturers and others. And that's understandable uh, in, in terms of Greece. But one thing I don't get uh, well, is that the Britain also sort of is, has been borrowing. Now you will see in the next slide that, I mean, there is a lot of explanation to this that, you know, 
if I remember David Cameron when he came to power he actually told that there will be austerity measures it, 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 it you know there was a huge rise on the Gordon Brown here really to the GDP it's increasing as you can see debt level increasing but then Gordon Brown well if I remember the I'm a bit politicizing it just to make it clear to you or more interesting for you if you're interested in politics hopefully you are now Gordon Brown you know kept borrowing because of you know the need to increase the aggregate spending due to uh, recessionary gap we had after 2008 but then Gordon uh, the David Cameron also promised I think if I remember correctly to reduce instead of increasing he kept borrowing at some point I think they they managed to plateau this sort of growth they managed to cut back on the on, on borrowing but then um, it essentially went went upwards basically increasing even in, in the end so this is just this is this just tells you that the financial crisis of last period most likely forced all governments in the west basically to keep borrowing now and this probably they expected the the government or, or the government in power basically expected that they would be able to balance in the in the later years they will be able to pay back in later years not that this will be burden so borrowing today will be burden for future generations to come so they i guess they expected tax revenues will be higher to to be able to sort of uh, to, that would enable the governments to pay back these debt amounts of debt anyway and also by the way if you are on a student loan uh, it's part this part your loan is actually on this increased sort of one some somewhere on this trend yeah you it's adding contributing towards this amount because that loan is actually government expenditure in the end and that has to be financed and that was through through this uh, sort of borrowing now fiscal policy further terminologies now uh, government finances usually are used for the whole public sector now this includes the central governments uh, financing needs local governments financing needs, and also public corporations now we know what the two are central and local government the public sector is basically or public corporations are the publicly listed companies well there's a lot of debt there in the financial markets and, and these are this these, uh, these are spent on or they are due to these public corporations borrowing now some together is make up the public sector basically now I've been talking about public expenditure or government expenditure what is it now there are different sort of definitions for this now you have this first two here current and capital expenditure now current expenditure is basically uh, the expenditure within the fiscal period current period for example within this 2008 period 2018 period I should say this include wages administrative expenditures and welfare payments all the all the council tax bill payments or credits or or housing benefits yeah, all of these are current expenditure which you know they come you know, arise due to this sort of operational sort of uh, activities of the government now capital expenditure is just investment it's just an investment government investment in roads households and schools basically they make up of the assets these are the assets of the government now another way of defining the government expenditure is looking at the, the final expenditure and transfers now final expenditure is the spending on the goods and services uh, produced in the UK for example yeah so that's G that you know the component of aggregate demand um, of course this could be you know capital expenditure G I mean spending on capital expenditure for example or spending on wages either way that make up the G now transfers however are the benefits with the welfare part here of current expenditure is also called transfers unemployment benefits and others now according to statistics it looks like 93 percent of uh, expenditure is current so wow that's huge if annually if the government is spending 100 billion for example 93 percent of it is just spent on sort of short-term expenses paying bills and admin expense welfare payments and only seven percent is capital expenditure in the uk that's a that's a low amount basically only seven billion of hundred billion is basically spent on building houses and hospitals maybe that's why we're facing nhs crisis yeah we don't have enough hospitals now another way of looking at it is just splitting the sort of expenditure into final and 
and then transfers. This would imply apparently 62% of the expenditure is basically final expenditure, so that's spending on goods and services, and 38 on benefits. Now, benefits are huge. It looks like government, UK government, is paying for a huge amount of uh, benefits transfers. So this could include all these benefits that households receive or unemployed people receive or disabled people receive and if i remember the the uh, as part of austerity measures um, david cameron was trying to reduce this one 38 as much as possible by slashing benefits and if you remember a lot of new benefits rules have been rolled out now and he was trying to include this part spending on final goods so that companies benefit you know if you increase if you pump take some money from here and put it into this obviously who benefits the corporations the employees and employers obviously so the, they were trying to slash this disability benefits to reduce this anyway so that's just a statistic for you let's now look at the uk public sector spending and receipts as percentage of gdp now this is read this off on the right hand side here on this axis this is the borrowing as percent of GDP per year, annual borrowing. Notice that the starting point is 34%. I mean, it looks like there's already a um, sort of huge amount of borrowing here. You, you can't really start from zero. That would be a huge, I mean, the taking up scale here, up scale basically. Yeah? Anyway, by the way, this is not, mm, this is, I'm misreading it myself. Basically, we start from zero here. This is for, for borrowing. As percent of GDP, we're looking at the right hand side. I just confused myself by looking at 34. This is this is for spending and receipts, by the way. So, uh, so, notice this. During the uh, 90s, this this whole period was the positive sort of uh, values imply the government was borrowing, while negative imply negative borrowing implies basically government had surplus, while in positive in this positive in this years government had to borrow to finance certain projects maybe could be anything basically but then negative periods involve uh, when the government basically uh, has surplus in this years now again borrowing positive increases basically so two percent on average it's in remaining two percent during 2000 and 2009 this is the boom years basically if i remember although this is deficit this borrowing they were boom years between 2002 and 2008 but then came the financial crisis you see huge amount of borrowing so 10 percent of gdp was borrowed in that year alone so this is 2010 i guess this is when the banks were still bailed out, huge amount of money was pumped into businesses and economy. That meant that, well, obviously, if the taxes aren't enough, somebody needs to borrow. The government needs to borrow it, right? So that's what happened. But it's a public sector, so this includes anything like corporations and and the local and 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 then central central government as well. But look, 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 look at this current period now. Recent. This is actually forecast, if I remember. They expect this period. To have a little borrowing and then surplus eventually in other words um, more taxes so this is a period where the government will pay off anyway now let's put the uh, current receipts and total managed expenditures now what what it looks like so this is basically tax receipt if you, you read this on this side so uh, tax receipts were about 40 percent just under 40 percent while tax receipt went down huge you know below zero I mean below 34 here not zero by the way in this period tax receipt went down now this explains now why we have huge borrowing it looks like economy GDP went down in this period probably I don't remember if government reduced the taxes but turns out with the tax receipts declining government had to borrow more that's it that explains why we have these hot hole bars here and then in this period where the taxation came back again uh, well tax rate the tax revenues increased well we see that this sort of no borrowing here yeah this negative borrowing here in this case in fact it's a payback now um, then you have this as a sort of flat area here which explains self-explanatory and then tax revenues plummeted back into you know into the bottom of the sort of thing 
again started declining this is the period of uh, GDP declining with it declines the tax receipts as well if 10% of GDP and you know tax receipts were 10% of GDP for example if GDP declines obviously as a result that amount will decline as well the revenue tax revenues decline and then to contract that basically the UK government borrowed huge amount here and its tax receipts are not increasing anymore that's because increasing tax means killing business investment so UK government hasn't actually increased taxes I think it, it even cut it by VAT was cut if I remember in 2009 by UK uh, the Gordon Brown's government from 17 and a half of to 15 percent to stimulate spending now how about managed expenditure wow that difference that explains the bar basically explains why we needed the cash because expenditure went up quickly here came down and again this is basically obvious this this huge rise here I'm not sure why there is a huge expenditure here so the difference is basically the debt when you see this is revenue this is expenditure the difference is this bar basically is the amount of extra that needed to plug that gap the same here difference is bar basically the huge rise this is a bailout period basically and then huge drop this sudden drastic drop is basically due to the austerity measures in other words the employment benefits start cutting back and started begin, uh, begin began declining basically and many others sort of they, I don't remember if there was a major project other than high-speed rail in the government group. I think a lot of scaling back was going on here under the uh, Tory government but I think you can see this now it's just stabilized well this is a forecast for 2019 apparently so expecting uh, no no more sort of austerity I guess anyway so that's the kind of an example of fiscal policy and here is just the uh, we actually didn't need this but this is UK public sector net debt now net debt implies basically difference between uh, receipts and then the balance of debt here as you can see the 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 blue bars show us the amount of debt balance now at the moment that we have in the UK government so at the moment we are on 1.600 billions 1.6 billion wow so trillion this is in billions so 1.6 trillion debt so UK government has 1.6 trillion debt divided by the total number of people 60 million that gives us uh, the debt per person in the UK just like GDP per person this is going to be debt per person now the good thing about this sort of debt is that the uh, this blue uh, the green line uh, sorry the, the red line is actually while it rose sharply during this period it's now declining which is a good news debt itself is increasing but our uh, percentage of debt per the GDP is declining this is because GDP has grown faster than debt in recent years so I hope that Theresa May will continue sort of this policy here and borrowing eventually if it goes uncontrollable you know to levels uncontrollable levels then the UK government the UK economy may face the same fate as the Greeks and Italy Italians and Portuguese and Irish did it's debt is not unsustainable in price world either taxes have to be raised or more has to be borrowed to pay back earlier you know debt you know if debt is due usually governments borrow to pay back the debt because the tax rate receipts are not enough to pay back they are just barely enough for paying benefits probably anyway this hopefully I thought this would initially be a, a short video but I ended up talking too much here see you in the next